On today's episode, we're talking escalation clause and if you should have one in your next purchase agreement. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up, everyone? Aaron here. Thanks for coming by and either watching or listening to this episode, wherever you're consuming this from. And as always, if you need anything real estate related, all my contact information is down below. So let's jump right into this. I want to make this kind of a short video because I think it's very important. People understand what an escalation clause is without really dragging it out. So an escalation clause is just that. It escalates your purchase price. So in today's market, things are going over asking. There's multiple offers. There's usually a little bit of a bidding war. Boy, that escalated quickly. And to alleviate a lot of the going back and forth, back and forth, the selling agent who's representing the homeowners that are selling will put out highest and best offer by whatever date and time. And that means everybody that's interested is going to put their highest offer in. And then the seller is going to select from all those different purchase contracts, which one they want to utilize. Now, the reason why you want an escalation clause in there is say maybe the house is going for 500,000 and you're like, you know, I'd be willing to pay up to 550, maybe even 575, but I don't want to go right off the gate starting that because maybe somebody comes in a little bit lower. Somebody comes in only at 510, 515, you'd be overpaying for the property. So what your agent can do or what I do is I put that in the purchase contract. Now, some places will have a separate rider for it. Some might even have it within the contract. The contracts I use through the Greater Hartford Association of Realtors doesn't have one. So what I do is I write it in the other spot for conditions in the purchase contract. And all it says is escalation clause, buyer willing to pay $1,000 or whatever that number is, could be 2,000 for you, might be 3,000, might be 5,000, over any bona fide offer up to 575,000 or whatever it is, you know, so maybe the house is going for six and you are like, all right, well, we'll go up 650, but maybe you get it for 605 because nobody else really bid. So that's the point of having that in there. So it's just escalation clause, buyer willing to pay whatever that amount is over any bona fide offer. So they have to show you the offer. They just can't say, hey, we got one, right? Up to whatever that amount is. So whether it's 500,000, 300,000, 200,000, it depends on that property. And that way there, when you submit that offer, if everybody else, let's say it's 575 is your max and the highest offer is 525, well, you're going to pay 526 for it. So you don't have to go back and forth. That selling agent doesn't have to call all the buying agents and say, hey, would your person come up 5,000? Would your person come you know, the highest offers? Is, it's just a more streamlined way of doing it. And everybody kind of puts their cards on the table. And I'm assuming if you're working with a good agent, they're going to recommend you do the same thing. And if not, you should bring it up. So that's the purpose of an escalation clause is because you don't want to overpay, but you also don't want to lose a property. And because you don't know what everybody else is bidding, you have to bid what you feel is comfortable. And the best way I think to do that is an escalation clause. That way there, you're not locking yourself into a certain price. You can work your way up to whatever your max offer would be. So again, it's very simple. It's just written into the contract. I do it under the other section on the purchase agreement. It just states escalation clause, buyer willing to pay whatever that number is over any bona fide offer up to whatever that number is. Very simple, very straightforward. Can't be really confused. So that's the purpose of an escalation clause. It's so you can get the best possible price for the property that you're bidding on, especially in today's market during a bidding war. So That's it. Hopefully you got some information out of it. In the next video, we're going to talk about whether you should be doing inspections in this market or not. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.